Not only will we explore the traditional drop shadow method, but I'll also reveal a simple hack that can make the whole process a lot easier. So if you're ready to level up your Photoshop skills, let's get started. So starting off, I'm just going to add a simple solid color and just drop in a color background for this project. I'll grab my text tool and I'll drop in some text and then scale it up. To add that traditional drop shadow, just double click on the layer and you can see down here at the bottom, I've got drop shadow. I'll turn that on. If you don't see it, click on the FX button here and be sure to add drop shadow to your list. Now this is pretty typical of what you will see for a drop shadow effect, but there are some things that we want to dial in. So from the start, I want to change my blend mode and make sure that is set to multiply. For this example, I'm just going to make sure that my drop shadow color is set to black. And one more thing, I'm going to turn on use global light. This is going to be important for later on. So I'm just going to adjust these sliders. I'm going to bring down my spread to zero and my size to zero. This way we can kind of see our drop shadow and where it's going to be placed. So let's put this around the 40 mark and I'm going to bring my size up to about 40 as well. Then I'm going to pull down my opacity all the way down to about 8%. Now this is just the start of our drop shadow effect because we can barely see it. But what we're going to do next is build upon that by clicking on this button here and adding a new instance of our drop shadow. Now I'm going to take my opacity and pull this up to about 11, bring my distance down to about 30, and I'll do the same thing for the size around 30. Let's add one more instance of our drop shadow and we'll pull the opacity up to about 15 for this one the distance down to about 20 and I'll bring my size down to about 20. One more instance, this one will pull the opacity up to about 18 or 19 percent and I'm going to bring the distance all the way down to about 7 and I'll pull the size down to about 7. So now we can say OK, I'll zoom out and we can see how this drop shadow effect is a lot softer and looks a lot more natural. So what did we just do? Let's zoom back in and take a look at all of these drop shadow instances. If I go back into each one of the instances and pull down the size and all the way down to zero, we can start seeing what we have just built. We can see how there is a really a bit of a step pattern that's going on here. And the closer that our drop shadow is to our text, the darker it's going to be. And as this cast shadow goes out, we can see how that this tapers off and it gets to be a little bit more transparent as it goes. You saw that I just moved the mouse because we have our global light turned on. I can actually click and drag while I'm in here and readjust this drop shadow just by clicking and dragging which is a nice feature but because we have them all turned on to global effect it's all going to happen at the same time they are all going to go in the same direction for this drop shadow hack it's really fun so i'm going to duplicate my layer by just hitting command j or control j on the keyboard and now i have two instances of my text i'm going to turn off the top one and go back here to my base one and i'm going to change the color to black now I'm going to turn back on my top instance of my text. On the bottom text that we change the color to black, I'm going to right click and change this to a smart object. I'll go up to Filter, Blur Gallery, and Path Blur. Inside of this blur effect, I want to make sure that I turn off Centered Blur. And then I'm going to grab my handles here on the angle and I'm just going to reposition them right about here. Now you can go ahead and dial in a little bit more of this blur effect by adjusting the speed and the taper and the endpoint of the speed. You can also adjust the endpoint of the speed if you mouse over this last handle here. You'll see this wheel pop up and I can click and drag on this wheel and adjust how far I want this long shadow or this long blur to appear. So right about there will work for me and I'll say okay. So back here on my artboard I can see that the shadow is kind of heavy and it also has some hard lines. So I'm going to take care of the hard lines first by going to filter, 
blur and Gaussian blur. And I just want to knock down those lines just a little bit, just make them a little bit more fuzzy. Now to soften this whole drop shadow effect, I'm just going to pull down the fill slider here and just pull that down to something appropriate that I think will work. I'm gonna bring in my original text drop shadow object here and drop that on and we can take a look at them side by side. Now our original has a little bit of a lighter drop shadow and we can go back in and make that a little bit darker if we need to. But you can see one is probably a little bit more natural in its appearance. And this one, our hack, is really a great option for something to just drop in pretty quickly. And you can always go back in and adjust the angle and the rate of that uh, blur. Hey, let me know in the comments below which one you think is your favorite. Be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.